Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Debian 10 which is codenamed Buster, the latest stable release which after two years in the making is now out and available for downloading. The default desktop environment is GNOME 3.30 and there are quite a few different system architectures available. So we have 32 and 64 bit, as well as ARM and a few different processor types. The focus of Debian, as always, is stability and more stability. So as a result, this will be far from the bleeding edge. So you're less likely to get cut up and injured by bugs. So as you can see, we have Linux kernel 4.19 and we have Mesa 18.3. Let's take a look at some of the changes. Now, bizarrely, the first thing I'm going to do is log out. Because I thought this was a bit of an interesting one here, that we have Wayland as a default session for GNOME. But you also have the option of using Xorg as well. So Xorg comes pre-installed by default. All you have to do is select it and time of login. Funny that Debian have succeeded in getting Wayland working, whereas Ubuntu have thus far failed. <laughs> What I will say though is the animations don't seem to be quite so good. Yeah, it just appears there on the application listing. There's no animation at all. Let me just show you again. So yeah, it just appears. Whereas if I switch back to the Wayland session, with the Wayland session, the activities, the show applications is now much more animated. I can't see anything else much different other than the awkward permissions trying to open Synaptic. Another visible change which I can actually show you is on the root file system. Bin, lib and sbin are now linked folders. There's no actual individual folders for them anymore. They're all linked to slash usr and the subfolders of slash bin, lib and sbin. So that's where all the applications and library files are. I guess that makes sense. You don't have to go looking in two different places for these files. Although if you're just typing the command in the Linux terminal, more often than not, you don't actually have to know the precise location as all these are searchable locations. Let's go for one more visible change. Under the printers, we now have driverless printing. So I can just select the printers and it's already recognized my, well, HP Office Jet. That was a wireless printing. And well, to be honest, this feature has been around for at least a couple of years or so in Ubuntu. So. I suppose it's nothing major, but it's just a, a nice feature to finally see in Debian. Now for the under the hood changes, and the focus has really been on security. App Armor is enabled by default. There's an optional hardening of apt. UEFI Secure Boot support has improved. And IP tables has been replaced by NF tables. This is due to the performance gain with NF tables. IP tables is somewhat limited. The NF table change will affect server owners. Though from what I understand, you can revert back to using IP tables, although they strongly discourage it. Well, that covers the most significant under the hood changes. Just going back to discussing the wider aspect with Debian, so they do offer a few different desktop types. GNOME is the default. But you also have XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, Mate, LXDE, and LXQt. The KDE desktop is version 5.14. I'm surprised they've gone with that because the long-term support release, the Plasma desktop, is version 5.12. 5.14 is already unsupported. I don't know, maybe they are backporting the updates. Let's discuss a little bit on tracking because this option featured in the installer. Configuring the popularity contest. Now this is entirely optional and the default option is no. So very nice, you do have the option of opting into usage statistics on the programs. This is nothing about what you're doing on the system, it's just what programs you have installed. I think this is a perfectly fair way of doing tracking in an operating system. Now let's take a look at the applications we get on the default install of GNOME. So you have Firefox extended support release for the browser, evolution for the email, we've got a few different games, we've got a partial suite of LibreOffice, I installed Synaptic as part of testing, and to be honest, there's not really much else notable. I think this list is a bit shorter than the previous release of Debian, because I remember Inkscape being installed on that one by default. A very sparse list indeed. Other than that, it's all the GNOME utilities. Where are we up to with system usage? I've crept up to one gig. And incidentally, I meant to say about the 700 meg of memory used at boot up is about the same as what it was previously with Debian. So Debian Buster could be summed up as new release of applications and improved security. So that was a look at the latest release of Debian Stable. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.